It's great to have you with us. We're going to be, as you can see, graphing absolute value functions today. We're getting straight back into this idea of graphing techniques until the end of next week. And um, I thought I should start, I always like to begin this way by giving you a justification for why we care about this because we're going to get stuck into the weeds pretty quickly. Um, so I want to make sure we just have a kind of top line view of um, why does this matter to us? Why are absolute value functions a thing that we say you need to learn about and we're going to assess you on your ability to do these things. Uh, so this is just an example from my life that I've just pulled out. This is from this week. Um, I'm, not, I'm not especially fit. I don't have a very athletic physique, uh, but I, I try my best and you know, COVID's given us all excuse to try and get out and about. So what you're looking at here, wow, someone's microphone just went bananas um, and started screaming. I don't know whose it is. Sorry, I can see most people are on mute though. So it's someone I can't see in the background. So if you can make sure you're on mute, that'd be really helpful. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to keep going. So this is a run I went on on Monday uh, evening, on Monday night. And I want you to in particular have a look at this feature that was highlighted on the left hand side, which is elevation. Okay, so um, like most of you do, I live in the hills area, which is uh, really great for riding and terrible for running. So you can see I've gone up and I've gone down and uh, my GPS is tracked that I've gone through 94 meters of what they say is elevation. Now, what does that mean? Well, that's about going up hills and down hills and then taking the sum of all of that. Now, if you look more closely and drill into where did the, where did the app on my phone get all this information from? If you have a look over here on the right hand side, you can see for every kilometer that I've gone, it's tracked um, how far I've gone up, how far I've gone down, and you can see the down elevations over there in the right hand side in negative, right? So you've got, uh, you can see it's some of the fastest parts that I ran, kilometer five, kilometer six, um, they are in going down a hill. So no surprises that I can run faster there, right? So what the absolute value is doing here is saying, okay, I know what you really mean is your total up and total down. So instead of adding up all these numbers together and you're gonna get something close to zero because I roughly ended where I started, um, I actually wanna know the total change. And this is something that we looked at with integration, right? We're answering the same question here of what is the um, total amount of change, whether it's a distance or a number of people who've gotten sick because of COVID or whatever it is, right? So this is why we care about absolute value. When change is the thing that we're interested in and the direction in which you change matters less. So this is just one instance of that. Can we knuckle down into the mathematics of this? Well, when we think about absolute value, there's kind of three different ways we can define this. So if you're taking notes, this is the time to pick up your pen. The three ways to define these um, go in increasing levels of sophistication. So I'm gonna start with the simplest one. It's kind of just intuitive. It's the one that I'm pretty sure most of you have in your brain. When you see these uh, two big lines that say absolute value, the absolute value of X means take the positive value of X. So if X is already a positive number, then the absolute value of X is just that number. But if you have a negative in there, like say the absolute value of negative five, we mean, well, just make it positive, right? Tell me what the positive part of that or the size of that number is, irrespective of what direction it's facing, whether it's positive or negative, okay? We'll come back to this graphical interpretation in a second because as you know, this is a graphing topic. Um, how can we make this a little more technical? Because this is a sort of, um, it's a colloquial definition if you like, makes sense, but it's not very rigorous. Well, a more technical way of describing the absolute value of X is that the absolute value of X is the distance from X to zero. The distance from X to zero. Um, that might mean the origin on like a number line. So if I said to you before, you know, this idea of uh, the absolute value of negative five, it isn't just take the positive uh, value. It's also a way of saying, how far is this number, negative five, how far is it from zero? And the answer is it's five away from zero. It just happens to be in that direction, but the absolute value doesn't care. All right, so this makes it, <clears throat> excuse me, um, more, more technically accurate, but the most succinct way, because mathematicians are always looking for um, sort of quick ways to write things, the most succinct way to write the definition for the absolute value is with algebra, okay? Now you can see my absolute value sign here. I've, I've left some space above and below because what we do is we say the absolute value is two different things at two different times. If you've got a positive number in there, like five, right? If X is positive, or if it's zero for that matter, then what is the absolute value of X? 
it's just x. Absolute value of five is five, provided five is greater than zero, which it is, right? But if you have something which is negative, if x is less than zero, then to take the positive, what we're really doing is we're slapping a minus sign on the front of there and the two negatives cancel. So the absolute value of x is equal to minus x if x is negative. So if you come back to this uh, example that we had a look at before, I'll stay with this same color. Um, when we say the absolute value of negative five is five, what we're really saying is, oh, okay, the thing inside the absolute values, uh, it fits this condition uh, here. It fits this condition over here. So therefore, what should I do? Um, which, which way should I define the absolute value of x? I'll use this part of the definition. So it's really negative of negative uh, five, I should have said, um, which of course gives us the positive five that we saw before. Okay, so these are all the ways that we can define the absolute value. They all kind of fit together. Um, but what do they mean visually? Because we're, this topic is all about graphing techniques, right? Well, the graphical interpretation for the intuitive definition over there on the left-hand side is basically, if there's any negative part of a graph, then you take that part and you make it positive, okay? So in other words, if you've got a negative section, you reflect negative parts of the graph across the x-axis, which is to say um, upwards, right? So if something was negative because it was down beneath the x-axis, we reflect it up above the x-axis. So we reflect negative parts uh, above the x-axis. So you'll see this, this is kind of the way that people see it most immediately. You're like, oh, there's a part where the graph just kind of rebounds off of the x-axis. So that's why this reflection idea is pulled out. Uh, when we look over the algebraic definition, um, even though you end up with the same result, this algebra tells us something very different. What it's basically saying is, for different domains, oops, let me zoom out back there again, sorry about that. For different domains, the absolute value of x is defined by different graphs. So for different domains, we define the absolute value of x with different functions altogether. So we have a technical name for this. We call the absolute value and other functions like this, we call it a piecemeal function. Let me write that uh, word in in case you've never heard it before. A piecemeal function. Um, that means for some parts of the domain, some pieces of the domain as it were, we define the absolute value in one way and then for other parts of the domain we just define it another way. And you can see that definition um, down here underneath the algebraic definition. So this is a piecemeal function. What that means is sometimes it behaves like this, other times it behaves like that. So why don't we have a go at taking these definitions and seeing what they look like. Let's do, um, as we did with our, um, our polynomials yesterday, let's do the basic graph and then let's see ways that we can transform this and look at different versions of it. So if you haven't already, um, please go ahead and draw up a set of axes. If you're like, oh, wait, you shouldn't have scrolled past that so fast. You can't wipe off a whiteboard that quickly. Don't worry, I'll come back to those definitions in a second. And of course you get all these notes on Canvas afterwards. So I'm um, sorry, I should have warned you that I was gonna scroll past that. All right, the absolute value of x. Now, here's the way I'm going to recommend that you think about this. As a kind of supplementary graph, what I wanna do is graph this thing without absolute values. We're just gonna ignore the absolute value signs, graph that, it's obviously a very simple function that we're beginning with, and then we're gonna think about that intuitive definition that we saw before. Mrs. Bowen, is everything okay? I see you coming to the screen. Everything's fine? Just making adjustments? Okay, so. What we're going to do is, and if you've got another color there, this will help, but if you don't have another color, maybe you can do this in a dotted line or something like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this regular function without any absolute value signs, and then I'm going to take this guy and see how it changes it, right? So y equals x, this is our familiar straight line that goes through the origin, and it has a, um, a gradient of 1, okay? So there's y equals x, and in fact, I might even write it like so. All right, now let's use our intuitive definition. It's the easiest one to work with, even if it's not the most technically accurate. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, well, are there any positive parts of this graph? If they're positive, they're fine, they can just stay put, because the, the absolute value of a positive number is just that same positive number. Um, and you can see the part of the graph that satisfies that condition, right? Over there in the first quadrant, on the top right-hand side, all of this stuff over here is positive, so absolute value of this, just ends up being that same graph. So I'm just gonna go over that, and again, if you've got another color there, just sort of re-emphasize that line. 
Now for the left part of it, this is where we said, oh, you've got some negative numbers here, right? Um, you might have a set of coordinates like say, um, negative one comma negative one, right? It's like, well, my y value there is, uh, sorry, my x value there is negative. So I need to take the absolute value to get the y value that corresponds to it. So it reflects up, I'm gonna use another color here, it reflects up across the x-axis. And this happens for every single point, right? If I took another point down here, like negative two comma two, it would reflect upwards across the x-axis. And if you fit these all together, then unsurprisingly, let's sort of thread the needle a little bit here. You get this reboundy thing that we were talking about before, right? What you're looking at here in blue is the absolute value of x. It has an intercept there, at zero, um, it, it sort of turns around at the origin, and this is uh, how we define the function, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is um, recognize that we've drawn this, the, the method in which we drew it was to use the intuitive definition, but we can take, let me just scroll, sort of zoom back out a second, we can take this algebraic definition and what it tells us and apply it to what we've drawn, right? Um, let's have a look at the way the algebraic definition works. There's the positive part, x is greater than zero, look at the domain, that's the right hand side over here. So this branch of the graph is y equals x and it exists over here when x is greater than zero um, or equal to zero as well. And then over here we have a whole different branch which is, it has a whole different equation. This is y equals negative x. So you can see I've got two functions sort of coexisting together. Um, they just like at that x equals zero sort of tipping point, they switch over, okay?